Hello everyone and welcome to Nanaliza Dawn. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury and we have replay casts. We have a match starting up between Sparkles and Anir on Otago. I want to actually start that before I get transitioned because otherwise it's just this awkward thing of longer time starting up. Anyway, Anir going for the Shieldbot Factory and Sparkles going for the Glokabot Factory. Classic matchup on a map that I really don't agree works well for it because this map is giant, but okay, sure, why not? Let's go for it. See what happens. I mean, if they're both going bots, it's not a huge deal. I do consider Sparkles to have the advantage here just because of how mobile Glaives are, but honestly, they're both going to have a hard time getting across the map. This is probably going to come down to a single ball fight, maybe two. I mean, a bit of harassment early on, but it takes about a minute for any units to get across the map, so that's a good chunk of the game. That's probably about a tenth of the game right there, depending on how long the game lasts. So like I said, shouldn't... It'll be probably more about how much economy they build up before any major battles, but I can't imagine there'll be more than one major battle before this is over. But hey, we'll see what happens. Anyway, Sparkles and Anir, not even... They have no idea where they are. I don't think they have any idea that the other one's playing what factory they are, because it looks like they just managed to pass by each other. Completely oblivious. Sparkles... Not really... Okay, looks like they're trying to go around a little more carefully anyway, trying to make sure that their glaive does not follow standard paths. I mean, you can tell the way that they've actually ordered it. It's going around this little alcove. Straight path for a glaive would just be through here. So, interesting thinking. It does mean Sparkles is going to be able to just avoid the patrols coming out there, which is good. I mean, they're able to get into a near space. Same time, their commander is up front. And bear in mind, this commander does have beam laser on it, because of course it does. So, Aglaive getting in there, doing his damage. No commander in place and no bandits either. So, good job, Sparkles. Getting a little bit of harassment early on in the near. Unfortunately, not able to get the convict. But hey, I got the metal extractor. That is still something. That's still going to slow down in here a little bit when it comes to economy. At the same time, though, Sparkles is focusing a lot more on their military and is, as a result, a little behind on their military. And at the same time, it looks like they will have some revenge coming in here from the bandit because why not? I mean, there's nothing really defending this either. Sparkles, the commander, moved a little bit too far north. It should be able to jump in, and indeed it does, jumping in to take care of the bandit. Another couple bandits are going to be following, but it's probably not going to matter too much. Same time, Sparkles losing the glaive, so Sparkles' harassment has been effectively stopped. While at the same time, Anir's harassment is currently just stalled. Same time, Sparkles has no defenses. I have one Lotus in the back, which isn't really going to do much. And, of course, one... Oh, that is ironic. Moving the commander away from this metal extractor. And that allows the bandit to come in and take it apart. So, nice try there. But it looks like Sparkles might be a little, having a little hard, bit of a hard time keeping up the AT, APM for this fight. They do have their commander just hanging out idle in the front of their base. Not managing to do all that much. And that's giving Anir plenty of room to come in and just start wrecking face. Also getting rid of the Scythe. Oh, that is unfortunate. That Scythe is going to be able to do damage, but it's kind of too late. Sparkles is already behind 5 metal per second. Anir is doing just fine building up the free build, no problem. The only thing right now is they aren't really expanding down to the south here, and I would like to see that. But they are managing to get their economy going, and... Okay, there they go. Right as I say that, they go and do it. But yeah, that... That's going to be tough for Sparkles. They have a bit of reclaim to work with, but really not that much. And they have not expanded anywhere near as aggressively. Or at least in theory they haven't. Ah, right, Anir. Okay, I see, what I see what they've done there. Gone for the overdrive. Bit of a risky play, because the wind generators aren't as reliable. But there's only three of them. At this point, Anir is only re really relying on wind generators for additional power, if you look at the numbers. So that should work out all right. At the same time, Sparkles reclaiming their way back to some kind of parity for the time being, but really... Just get more metal extractors. They should end up fine, all things considered, because, again, Anir only has six metal extractors plus overdrive. Sparkles has six metal extractors as well. On this map, basically all the metal extractors are the same, so Sparkles is having no problems catching up. Of course, it's going to come down to whether or not this raiding group here is going to be able to do much, and honestly, I don't think they will. Sparkles, they got the commander in the way. They got the Lotus in the way. It's good. This area is finally secure. Finally got the Lotus there, just in case the commander has to go off and do something else. Second raiding group over to the south is going to be no real issue thanks to the Reaver being there. So Sparkles has prepared quite well for the bandit's assault. At the same time, their own glaives coming in here. Nothing really stopping that. The commander of... An, oh, and nearest commander, they're done. Their nearest commander is dead. If these commanders, if these glaives come near the commander, the commander's going to have no choice but to jump away and leave everything open to the glaives. And there's not much defending it. There's no outlaws or anything. All of Anir's forces are focused entirely on Sparkles' base. And Sparkles, they're ready for that. And the commander is obviously up front, building everything up as they normally do. The same time, commander coming in here, getting a good jump away, actually. That's that's a really good jump. 
except for the fact that now it's stuck. The one downside to that jump. The upside is it's not dead. But it also can't help defend. Thankfully for an ear that they threw in a couple lotuses, which does mean the glaives have no real way to go. At this point, we have a bit of a stalemate going on. Possibly bro being broken by this scythe. At the very least, the scythe will be able to get one metal extractor, maybe two. Don't go for the second. Don't go for the second one! It's still probably dead. It might be able to deceive the bandits. Yeah, I like the way the Anir is spreading out like this. But, well done. Avoiding the D-cloak radius. Sparkle should be able to get a bit more harassment going on here. If they're paying attention, but they're not paying attention! Oh! Bad time to turn the camera away. Sparkle's losing that scythe after some really nice micro for it. Still, though, Sparkles has ended up at a massive advantage. And the entire time they've been doing this, they've been also expanding consistently. While Anir... They've been setting up the southeast side of the map, but otherwise not much. As a result, Sparkles is in a really strong position to just keep going forward in this game while Anir is... They're playing catch-up. They're not really setting anything up for expansion. I can kind of understand why. They have been harassed quite a bit. But they have the Outlaws now. They should be able to get... Well, they're getting Outlaw Rogue. Not a bad mix. Feels kind of like a Cloaky-style strategy with shield bots, but it's not a terrible idea. And at this point, I think Anir might actually have a slight military advantage. Also able to get rid of the north side. What does have a military advantage? It's... Uh, it is... Yeah, still Anir. By about 700 metal. A lot of that can be explained by the attrition, though. But with those Reavers, it will be a lot harder for Anir to maintain that attrition advantage. At the same time, Sparkles is just gradually crawling across the map, making sure they get all the metal extractors they can in the meantime, and defending them okay. I mean, at this point, it's basically just a warning sentry tower. It's not actually going to do all that much damage to these units. There are too many of them. Even these Reavers are going to have a hard time. If they come together, they'll be fine. Sparkles has come out, on the other hand, wisely trying to get out of there, and I don't think they'll be able to. The question is, can they buy enough time for the Reavers to come in and save them? Because that's the only option they have right now, and that is not going to happen. Sparkles' commander is going to go down. Nice try. Does manage to get rid of the Glaze, but unfortunately, losing that commander is still a bit of a blow. Anira is going to be... Anir's going to be behind, so it's not as big of a blow as it could have been. But it's still a pain in the butt. At the same time, Outlaw Rogue coming in here and no Rocco's, sorry, no Ronin here to deal with it on Sparkles' part. Sparkles pretty quick with the storage, though. So at least they got that set up. And they got the switch over to Raven. So if they bomb out the Outlaw, they should be able to take out everything else relatively easily. I mean, if the Outlaw is gone, the Glaives can come in and start ripping. Uh, well, okay, the Glaives could come in and rip everything apart. There just aren't very many of them. These four glaives are the only glaives in the game. So I don't know what's really the plan here for Sparkles, other than maybe bombing out a couple units, like bomb out an outlaw or two, bomb out one of the rogues. I don't see it, because rogues, I mean, they're going to be able to outrange the, the reavers, so there's not really a whole lot of options here. The reavers are a bit of an overinvestment, and honestly, I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. There's the Ronin. So honestly, I'm not sure what the plan is right now. The plan for Sparkles is to go for Ronin, if Sparkles manage to keep their army alive, that'll work out beautifully. Just keep the Ravers in the back. Try to slow down the progress of Anir's forces. Come in with some Glaives along the side with some Ronin. Get rid of this army. And then when the Bandits come in to try to counter the Ronin, you already have the Reavers in play to deal with them. Although it looks like we're going to be seeing more of a Thug Law Ball. Still good for Bandits. I mean, sorry, still good for Glaives. Still good for... Actually, still good for Reavers as well. Come to think of it. The Thugs... The Thugs don't really do well against Reavers, but honestly, Ronin Glaive would be the better option here. It almost looks like Sparkles is trying to keep these Reavers more or less in the fight, which I don't agree with. Rogues are going to beat them. Don't try it. On the other hand, these guys coming for the convicts. Great play there. If they can just get out of there alive, they'll be fine. Going for the rogues, not a bad idea, though at this point, those glaives have pretty much signed their own death warrant and really should escape by now. A couple of Reavers coming in the back as well to help harass over the south side of the map, which is a really smart idea, given that there are a couple Lotuses there. That's about the only choice that exists. And, of course, here's a switch over to Bandits. The Reavers are already in place, so the Bandits, once they come and show themselves, those Reavers can actually go north. I mean, they are obviously going for the harassment. I don't think Sparkles is going to be moving them to change over to hit the Bandits. But if they do, Sparkles will be able to wipe out the Bandits no problem. And at this point, again, Sparkles already has a bunch of Reavers in play. So this is going to come down to positioning. But Sparkles is already in a really good position to actually deal with this stuff. Just wipe out the Lotus, wipe out the Metal Extractors. I mean... Go forward and wipe out the Lotus. Not sure what you're... Oh, it was on fight. Ah, I see. If I move auto stuff. That makes sense. 
course, at the same time, Anir is ahead economically. Like, they've been they've been harassing quite a bit. That ball that was coming along the map, that has destroyed about 6 metal per second off Sparkles. And Sparkles doesn't have a commander, so they can't easily rebuild that. Or easily reclaim. I mean, anything they try to do forward has to be well defended. So that's more investment in defense from their army. And not as much into actually getting rid of the army for Sparkle, or for Anir or wiping out what Anir has. Good harassment coming in from Sparkles over to the southeast. Did lose a Reaver in the process, but still, not a bad option. Did do some damage. Did knock Anir's economy a little bit back. At this point, though, the clear goal is get rid of Anir's commander. The wipe out that, that will help a lot for getting rid of some of these expansions. And, of course, we'll also even out the economy. And last bomb coming in, there's nothing in dodge it! Anir's commander goes down. So with that, Anir and Sparkles are even. Anir losing a little bit of metal and energy to that loss of commander, but it looks like the storage is going to be up. Is the storage going to be up? No, not quickly enough. Okay, quickly enough, yeah. Within the first five seconds. Not a terrible timing. But at this point, Sparkles is at least somewhat even as far as frontline construction goes. Not especially even in terms of overall map control and economy. That's... Actually, wait, that is even. Never mind. Okay, they are pretty even as far as that goes. So, good job Anir. They might actually turn things around. Oh, sorry, good job Sparkles. They might turn things around if they manage to get rid of this force. And that is the major problem here. I would actually kind of like to see some knights. Like, knights and or slings come in here help get rid of these, rogue, these rogues. I mean, the Ronin aren't a bad idea. But it's just, it's one of those even fight situations. Like, why fight an even fight if you don't have to? And I, I mean, I can kind of understand it's, they're there. Thrown under there, it's good to get, good to have them get rid of stuff. But knights just can tank really well. So if the knights tank, the Ronin can come in and aren't being torn apart by the rogues. And if the knights aren't being tanked out by, the, or aren't being destroyed by the rogues, they can come in and wipe them out. Or just tank out this. I don't know, I just... Last few times I've played Cloakie, I've had a lot of success with knights, so maybe it's just me. But I feel like knights and slings are somewhat underutilized units. Or hell, even imps in this case, when you have... Well, no, not imps. Imps are a one-shot thing. If you use imps, your opponent's gonna go for outlaws, and then you're never gonna be able to use imps again. So, not bad if you have the thing to use, but considering that we already have an air factory, get one Thunderbird. One Thunderbird will be able to wipe out the shield ball that's being built up here, and then run in with a run and wipe it to shreds. Or run in with a bunch of glaze, rip it to shreds, doesn't matter. Or lose all your fighters destroying the felon shields. I mean, that gets rid of the felon shields. Not really the best option, but hey, it's draining the shield, so like, is there only some room to get in here? I still don't agree with that. Honestly, like, seriously, just get stuff that's not going to commit suicide attacking. But, well, it was productive suicide. I'll give them that. The felons weren't able to really do much of defending against the Ronin, and, I mean, the Vandals are doing a great job wiping out the air, but they're still a massive ground force. With both felons gone, it's basically just a matter of all of these ro Ronin... Or the rogues, rather. And that's where the glaives come in. There we go. I was about to say, Sparkles had better get some glaives. I kind of wish Sparkles had some glaives in advance just to follow up immediately rather than building the glaives. I mean, it won't be a huge deal. It's not going to be quick enough for any felons or outlaws to get to this, to this fight. But it still would have been nice to have the glaives a bit earlier. It's just, you know, a bit more planning. But that's fine. Works out. Still, Sparkles is able to get rid of this army, and I think that should push things over. As Sparkles and wipe out this army, that is going to be, I believe, the majority. Yeah, at this point, army value is even, and Sparkles has a massive positional advantage, wiping out all these rogues. So once they're done, Sparkles is going to have, well, another set of rogues to contend with, maybe, but that's about it. Nope, and here's throwing in the towel. They realize there's nothing left for them. They've lost their army, and that is going to be game. In fact, what was the army at the very end? Well, only a thousand metal lower, but still, considering what had happened, and considering the fact that Sparkles had basically built up exactly what they needed, and the fact that Sparkles had. Actually, it's still even income. That's actually fairly even. Sparkles was able to win from behind pretty much by playing things well positionally. That was about it. They actually didn't do a whole lot more than that. Their economy was consistently weaker. They used way less metal. They produced, um, well, way less metal. They Neither player really accessed, but still. Sparkles was behind economically. Just happened to win because, to some extent, Anir suddenly over-invested in defenses. And Sparkles went to good type counters. I mean, they got rid of the commander at a perfect time when it wasn't when it was vulnerable. There was no anti-air for it, and getting rid of the felons the way they did. I mean, yeah, it was a it was a costly thing, and I would have preferred seeing a Thunderbird, but it worked. It worked at great cost, but it worked. So, give them that. Near on the other hand, I yeah, they had a much stronger start on paper. 
much stronger on paper overall. I think really just came down to the fact that this defense value investment. I think Veneer had invested about half that into army and invested a bit more spread out, like more of a, out, like two or three more outlaws and a few more thugs, then it would have been easier to defend the rogues because the glaze wouldn't have just been able to come in. It would have been much more of a, much more an ordeal to get them in there to get through that, especially if there are more felon or more thugs and the felons would have had more shields to work with. So I do think that might have been a bit of a problem. Also, to address stuff in chat, hello, happy new year to everyone. This is my first stream of the new year. I was sick over the course of the holidays, unfortunately, so yeah, not able to stream then. And to Danaren, this map is, it's kind of funny, it reminds you of Fields of Isis. It, because there actually is a map that was played a few years ago. It, I got out of all the featured cues and everything for, well before there were featured cues, actually, that was Fields of Isis. I don't mean it was like Fields of Isis, like this map is kind of similar, you can kind of see some things in... I mean, this feels more total annihilation to me. Something about the way that the mountains are set up, and the contrast between areas that are completely flat, and areas with some mountains on them, that does remind me more of a total annihilation map design than subcom map design. But yeah, there actually is a Fields of Isis map in the spring maps catalog. I have it was played before it's not it doesn't work that great in this game it didn't work especially well in, in supreme commander to be honest it was a very campy map i hated it but anyway that's this match so the next match is going to be between jasper and space t on aurelian i kind of want to go over some of the newer maps out of the pool and see if anything's been developed over the course of the last few weeks since they've been added so yeah jasper and space t on aurelian that'll be up next and then, of course, following that will just be a series of the other, well, some of the other new maps. I'm not going to do Into Battle because that's not a new map, but everything else, yeah. So stay tuned for that. I'll be up in a couple of minutes. Man, my voice. Gah. Stay tuned for that as my voice goes all nasal and I can't do anything about it because it got a freaking cold. All right, be back in a bit. <laughs> 